Okay, so in this video, we will find the following limit using L'Hopital's rule. So as in every limit problem, we want to get an intuitive feeling for what we're dealing with, so we want to look at our case. So there are two parts of the expression here. There's the base, 1 plus 1 over 2x, and the exponent, which is x. If we look at the base first, as x tends to infinity, 1 over 2x goes to 0, so the base will be approaching 1, and the exponent clearly will be approaching infinity. So we have a 1 to the infinity case. And you have to be really careful here not to jump to the conclusion that the limit therefore is simply 1, as 1 to any kind of power is 1, because if you look at the expression here, it is not exactly 1. It is very close to 1, but never exactly 1. So you cannot jump to the conclusion here that this will be simply 1. And let's look at this and see why this is not so obvious in two different ways. First, let's get an estimate for this function when x is very large. So we're saying, what is happening to this function as x grows larger and larger and larger? Well, let's take a large value of x. Suppose we take x to be a million, so 10 to the 6. Well, let's plug in here 10 to the 6. So this will give you 1 plus 1 over 2 times 10 to the 6, to the power 10 to the 6. If you calculate this, well, this will be 1 plus 1 over 2 million, which is exactly 1.000. 0, 0, 0, 0.005 to the exponent 1 million. So you see we have a number that is now very close to 1 but slightly larger than 1 and we have a very large exponent. But if you use your intuition we know that if we take a large power of a number that is larger than 1 then the number will be a little larger. And so if you use your calculator, and you punch this in, you will find approximately, in decimals, 1.648721065. So you see, when x is a million, the function is very close to about 1.65, which is not that close to 1. So right there we see that perhaps the limit will not be equal to 1. And we can give a slightly more general argument that will support what's happening here in more generality. If we look at the x-axis, the point of interest here is 1. Now, as x is positive, no matter how large x is, 1 over 2x will always be positive. It will be very small, but still positive, which means 1 plus 1 over 2x is a positive number and is slightly bigger than 1. So let's separate the behavior of the base from the behavior of the exponent. If you simply look at this, as we've just said, as x tends to infinity, 1 over 2x shrinks to 0, so the base of our expression is trying to get closer to 1. But, we not only have one, over 1 plus 1 over 2x, but 1 plus 1 over 2x raised to the power of x. And now if you think about this, because 1 plus 1 over 2x is always larger than 1, and if we take a very large power of a number bigger than 1, then this will actually make the expression grow and grow. And so the exponent going to infinity is trying to push off the whole expression to infinity. So there are here two opposing forces. The base, getting closer and closer to 1, tries to pull the entire expression closer to 1, but the exponent, getting larger and larger and larger, and the base being slightly bigger than 1, therefore, tries to 
pull the whole thing towards infinity. So there are two opposing forces here. And we can see it numerically quite well. The base is very close to 1. So this is really, really close to, if we ignore the exponent, to 1. But once we apply the exponent, being really large, well, we multiply this number with itself a million times. But because the number is larger than 1, times itself a million times will grow, and we can see about to 1.65. So hopefully this convinces you that this is not the trivial case. Well, now the question is, how do we find the exact value of this limit? Well, let me call this L. And the idea is actually quite simple, but at the same time quite inspired. We know that to apply L'Hopital's rule, we need to have a 0 over 0 case, or an infinity over infinity case, so we need a fraction. But if we go back to our previous special cases, we know that a product between 0 and infinity can then be turned into a fraction, and we can then use L'Hopital's rule. So the question here is, how can we turn this into a product? And this can be, of course, accomplished with the help of the natural logarithmic function. If you have an expression of the form a to the b, and you want this to become a product, take the ln of it. And use a ve very well-known property of ln, which is that ln of a to the b, well, the exponent can be pulled outside, it's quite simply b ln of a. And now we have a product, and this is the key to finding the exact value of this limit. So let us now take the ln of the limit. So ln of L is the ln of the limit. And now we can use the fact that ln is a continuous function for positive values and interchange the limit and the ln. So the ln of the limit by continuity of ln on the positive real axis is the limit of the ln. And now we can bring the exponent down. And let's see what kind of case we have once we've applied the ln to the limit and have brought the exponent down. Well, as x tends to infinity, x tends to infinity times and the second argument, as x tends to infinity, 1 over 2x tends to 0. So we're left with the ln of 1, and the ln of 1 is 0. So as expected, we now have a product, and a very interesting one, because it is an infinity times 0 case. So if we send the x down, we will now be able to use L'Hopital's rule. And you ask, well, what do we divide ln by to get a times x? Of course, that is a 1 over x. As 1 over 1 over x is simply times x. Or think of it this way. If you divide something by a fraction, you multiply it by the reciprocal. And the reciprocal of 1 over x is simply x. And now, the case is interesting. As x tends to infinity, this goes to 0. ln of 1 is 0 over... And as x tends to infinity, 1 over x goes to 0. So we now have, after a little bit of work, a 0 over 0 case, so we can now apply L'Hopital's rule. So, we replace the numerator by its derivative. Here we have to apply the chain rule, so the derivative of ln is 1 over the argument. So this will give us 1 over all of this. So 1 plus 1 over 2x times the derivative of the inside. Well, 
the derivative of 1 is 0, so that's gone. And to differentiate 1 over 2x, bring the x up as an x to the minus 1, which will give you, from the power rule, negative 1 half x to the negative 2. And if you send this back down, you'll have negative 1 half x squared. So this completes the derivative of our numerator. Same for 1 over x, if you differentiate this. Think of this as x to the minus 1, power rule, negative x to the negative 2, if you prefer, negative 1 over x squared. And now we can simplify. We have a negative 1 over x squared on top and on the bottom, so they cancel each other out. So what are we left with? The limit. As x tends to infinity, the first expression, so 1 over 1 plus 1 over 2x, times a 1 over 2, so times 1 half. And the limit now is completely trivial. As x tends to infinity, 1 over 2x tends to 0. So the first term will approach 1 over 1 plus 0, which is 1, times 1 half is 1 half. And now we have the answer, or do we? You have to be careful here at this point, because we were after finding this limit, which we called L, but now we haven't found L, we have found the ln of L to be 1 half. So let's be careful. So the ln of the limit is equal to 1 half. So ultimately we want the value of L, the value of not the ln of the limit, but the value of the original limit, well, to cancel off L, we simply have to raise both sides with the base E. So E to the ln of L is E to the 1 half, but E being the inverse of ln, they cancel out, and so we're left with that the limit L, which is, if you recall, the limit as x tends to infinity of 1 plus 1 over 2x to the x is actually exactly equal to e to the 1 half, or if you prefer, the square root of e. And if you go back here to our approximation, we saw that when x was a million, the function was about 1.648. Well, if you use your calculator, and you enter the square root of e, you will find this square root of e is approximately 1.648721271. And so you see, we're using x to be a million. We had a very good approximation for the value of the exact limit. This was very close to this value, which is an approximation to the square root of e. And so you see the new twist here is we had, is for the first time, a case of the form 1 to the infinity. The idea was simply take the ln of the expression to have a product, send one term down, in this case the x term, to have a 0 over 0 case, apply L'Hopital's rule, and find the answer, but don't forget, not to the original limit, but to the ln of the original limit. So to find the original value of the limit, we have to exponentiate e to the answer that we found using the ln of the limit. And hopefully, at the same time, this convinces you that a case of the form 1 to the infinity is non-trivial, as the answer clearly was not equal to 1, but the square root of e. That's a rather unexpected answer. And as an aside, you can tackle cases of the form 0 to the 0 or infinity to the 0 using the exact same idea. Those two cases are also non-trivial, and I will let you think about why they are non-trivial. But to tackle such limits, the exact same solution here can be applied. And that's it.